So far in this class, we've focused on the physics of solid objects. Uh, today we're going to start chapter 12, which is looking at the physics of fluids. So uh, fluids here means uh, substances that can flow and can change their shape. So this includes both uh, liquids and gases, and we have uh, slightly different rules to follow for liquids and gases. We'll address um, some of that later on. So the neat thing about fluids is that, you know, all the stuff we've already learned in physics 106, uh, kinematics, forces, energy, momentum, all of these ideas apply to fluids just as well as they can to a baseball or a rocket ship or whatever, whatever else we looked at previously in the class. Um, so, you know, F is still equal to MA, right? Newton's second law still applies. Uh, energy is still conserved unless there is a non-conservative force. Um, they, you know, it still feels a force from gravity proportional to its, its mass. Um, and we can lose mechanical energy to some friction-like forces. Um, so all these, all these ideas apply to fluids, um, but we use some new variables to describe what's going on, and we also see some new phenomena that we don't have um, direct analogy to with our, with our solid objects. So let's talk about some of the variables we need to describe um, what's going on with our fluids. So the first uh, variable to talk about is uh, kind of the, the analog to our, the mass of our object. So with fluids, because uh, very often we're not talking about a particular chunk of fluid, we're talking about, you know, a dispersed amount of fluid or even an unknown amount of fluid. Um, we represent the mass per unit volume of the fluid. So that is, of course, the density, which we have encountered elsewhere in other, you know, physical science classes. Uh, so the variable for density that we use in this class is rho, a Greek letter rho that looks kind of like a P. Uh, I draw them like that, like this rather. Um, so our density is just the mass of our fluid over the volume of our fluid. And uh, we will run into volume a few times. So for volume, I use capital V. I'll try to do it, draw it as bigger. Um, if we do have volume and velocity in the same equation, it might come up once or twice. Um, I'll try to remember to put little things on the V to show that it's like the big capital V for volume. Okay, <laughs> our units of density. Uh, in chemistry class or other classes, very often you use units of density uh, that are grams per cubic centimeter or grams per milliliter. Uh, we are going to stick with SI units in this class, so our units are going to be SI units of mass over SI units of volume. That is kilograms per cubic meter. So this is not the same as grams per cubic centimeter. And uh, if you imagine what a cubic meter is, you know, that's like this, this big. Uh, a cubic meter of water weighs more than a kilogram. Uh, in fact, it weighs a thousand kilograms. So the density of water, liquid water, you know, uh, to within less than a percent is 1000 kilograms per cubic meter. So in general, the numbers we're going to be using for density are probably bigger than what you've encountered in other um, in other classes. Uh, just as a comparison for some other density values, the density of lead is 11,300 kilograms per cubic meter. And the density of air, so lead of course is solid, water is a fluid, a liquid, um, We'll be comparing some solids and liquids at various points, so these um, solid density numbers are, are gonna, gonna show up also. Um, the density of air, and the density of air depends, you know, to some degree on things like temperature and pressure, uh, but, you know, typically under room conditions, uh, the density of air is about 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter, which is kind of bigger than you expect. You know, the air, you know, I don't know, the, the um, you know, 1.2 kilograms is a significant amount of mass. Uh, the room we're in now has, you know, a few cubic meters of air for sure. And so, you know, we're talking about 
you know, I don't know, five kilograms, which is, you know, maybe, uh, you know, 10 pounds or something of air. That's like, you know, that is enough that it, it is, you would feel it if you tried to lift it up anyway. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's our density. All right. Uh, the next variable I want to talk about is pressure. So when we have a fluid in contact with a surface, um, any surface, that fluid exerts, exerts a pressure on that surface. So that could be the air pushing on the whiteboard here. That could be uh, the water in, uh, in a bathtub pushing on you or something like that. Um, anyway, so, so fluids exert pressure on whatever they're touching. And pressure is a measure of force. Like we say the fluid pressure is pushing on the object. That is a, a force pushing on the object. The pressure is telling us about how that force is spread out over this area. Because our fluid doesn't just push on things at a single point. It pushes it pushes on it over some, some you know, spread out surface. So our pressure is the force per area. So, uh, so in terms of units, uh, our SI units of that are going to be units of force over units of area. So that is newtons per square meter. And one newton per square meter, uh, we give it its own name. This is called the Pascal. Uh, abbreviated capital P lowercase a. So one Pascal is uh, one Newton per square meter. Um, that turns out to be kind of a small pressure. Um, numbers in kilopascal are very common. KPA. And um, if you're talking about you know really high pressures, you can get megapascal or gigapascal also, um, which I don't know that will have need for, but we'll definitely see um, kilopascals. Um, some other pressure units that might be good to know. Um, one is the atmosphere. So that is the pressure of the air, the fluid air, um, at sea level. So that's abbreviated ATM. So one atmosphere is equal to 101,300 pascals or 101.3 kilopascals. So, uh, so this is very common if you're trying to do a problem that has, the, you know, that you need to know the air pressure at, at sea level or, you know, the air pressure in your room. Uh, this is, this is the, the SI value to use, 101,300 uh, pascals. All right. Cool. So if we have a fluid um, that has a pressure of zero, uh, that, that really means that fluid is not there. So a pressure of zero is another way of saying there is a vacuum. There is no fluid there. If you, if you have a container and you remove all the air from it, literally all of the air, um, that has a pressure of, of zero. All right. So one quick example calculation for this. So if this is the pressure of air um, and I have this sheet of paper, um, you can show that this sheet of paper has a uh, area. Well, I did the calculation for my binder, but basically the same thing. My, my binder has an area of uh, 0.075 square meters. So we'll say this paper has, a, has an area of 0 0.075 square meters. And if we calculate how much force this is feeling, so if we solve this for F, uh, F is equal to the pressure times the area, right? So 101,300 pascals, that is that many newtons per square meter, times this many square meters gives us a force of uh, 7,600 newtons on this piece of paper. So if I'm holding my notes like this, they are feeling a force downward from the air above them uh, of 7,600 newtons. Now, uh, this is 
a weight of 1,700 pounds. So that is a, you know, that's a, that's a small car, but that's a really big piece of metal for me to be holding in my hand. So, um, what the heck is going on? Why don't I actually get crushed under this pressure? Well, that's because below this piece of paper, there is also air at the same pressure, and it is exerting an upward force on this surface that is also equal to 70, uh, 7,600 newtons, and so those forces are perfectly canceling out. Um, so that's kind of surprising, but but in fact, that is that is true. The air in this room is pushing on everything it's touching extremely hard, and we just, um, that's, you know, we're, we're used to it, I guess. All right. So when we're talking about pressures, um, very often when we make when we make pressure measurements in real life, uh, it is often the case that you're making a pressure um, a, a measurement of the difference in pressure between two points. So here's my here's my example of that. Let's say I have a um, a bike tire, right? So that's like a hollow. Uh, you know, some hollow rubber space that I can pump air into. And I have a pressure gauge that lets me, you know, plug into this and it lets me read what, what the pressure is, right? So if I let all the air out of the tire, and I'm going to say that in quotes, let all the air out of the tire and the pressure gauge goes all the way down to zero, what is that really saying? Is that really saying that there are no air molecules inside this tire that I have replaced the air with a vacuum? No, uh, no, there is still air inside the tire. What it is telling me is the pressure difference between inside and outside is zero. So it's not measuring any difference in pressure. And so it says, oh, the pressure is zero. We know there's still just as much air inside as there is outside, I mean, in terms of the pressure. There's still just as much air pressure inside the tire and outside the tire. Um, and so this seems like an important thing to take into account. Okay, so this is the idea of gauge pressure. And again, a gauge is, you know, a device that we use to measure pressure. So the gauge pressure is the uh, pressure of a system measured relative to the environment. And the environment here is most often the air pressure in the room, but you could also make a gauge pressure where your environment was in outer space or at some different altitude on Earth where the pressure is different, or um, or even you know underwater or something where the pressure is higher. Anyway, so the way we the way we write this down in terms of equations is the total pressure. Uh, sometimes this is also called the absolute pressure. Uh, it is equal to the gauge pressure, which is, you know, the number that shows up on our pressure gauge, plus the pressure of the environment that the system is in. So like I said, most commonly this would be air pressure, and most commonly air pressure is 101.3 kilopascals, but depending on the situation, this could be lots of different numbers. So the gauge pressure here is really like if we imagine subtracting this from both sides, so we have P total minus P environment equals P gauge, you can kind of see that the gauge pressure here is kind of like a delta P, a change in pressure between the environment and the total pressure inside our system. All right, I think that's all I had to say about that. So, uh, so now we have we have density and pressure, two variables we can use to describe what's going on with our fluids. Um, and next, we're going to talk about some uh, some actual physics and how these pressures can change as we move in fluids.